Hi, we're the Mihalik family. I'm Donna. I have four children. Blake is 11. Cole is eight. Ah! Aiden is three. Aiden. And Stephanie's a year and a half. Look at this little sweetie. In the last four years, things have been a little difficult for our family. Four years ago, Cole was diagnosed with leukemia and was treated for about two and a half years. And now he's off treatments. And then two years ago, my husband, Stephen, passed away after a sudden illness. It was a very difficult time, difficult for the boys to lose their dad, and difficult for me, of course, to lose a partner and the person who helps you with the kids. The number one issue for me is the fighting. One of them wants to use the computer, and the other one's on it. That's got to stop. My kids cuss all the time. So shut the f up. Oh my f God, I told you this time. Do not to say that. And I hope you f time, Mom. Mom, how can you let the kids talk to you like that? Tell them to get off the computer. No, I've had it. Blake is 11, but he hangs out with much older kids. What is it with you that you can't listen? <laughs> Cole's very intense. Something oh no. I basically feel like I have no control over Aiden. Don't you move. Aiden! Stephanie's definitely picking up behaviors from the boys. Don't do that. If I can't get some kind of control of the chaos now, no. I can't even imagine what it will be like when the younger two start growing up and the older two are totally out of control. Mom, you're emotionally and physically depleted. <laughs> Please come now, Super Nanny. I need your help. Donna, you do need my help, but I've heard you and I'm on my way. Hello. Please come in. Hi, please meet me. I'm Jo. Hi, I'm Donna. Hi, Donna. And who's this little one here? This is Aiden. Give me a wave. Hi. And this is Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. Hi. Hi. <laughs> when Jo walked in, <laughs> she scared me. When she's all nannied out like that, she's she's a little scary. Oh, I have someone to meet you. Hi. You always on the computer, Cole? From the minute he gets up till the minute he goes to bed. Blake. Someone's here to meet you. Good morning, sleepyhead. <laughs> what I'm going to do is to allow you to continue how you normally would if I wasn't here, so that I can step back and really take a, a good look at you and your family. OK. All right? <laughs> what? <laughs> Stop talking to me like that. Get off the Hello? And how long has he been carrying that mouth for? I don't know. It's just getting worse and worse. Do not lock that door. Shut the up. I started to observe the family, and very, very quickly, I was glad this woman had called me. Hello. Excuse me? Get out of my bed. Come on, let's go. No. Let's go. If Cole's not happy, nobody's happy. Get out of here. Go, go. Well, it just go. surprised me that go. Cole had the audacity to even think that he could raise his hand to his mother and hit her and swear at her and talk to her the way he was. And she just took it. So is this how your children behave when they don't get their own way? Yes. When they don't get their own way? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or all of them. Yeah, pretty much. When the kids hit me or throw things at me, it feels just ugly. Like, like what's going through their head to think that they can treat me that way? Donna's completely exhausted with having to deal with her children's bad behavior. Blake, get up. Get up. Bad. No, we agreed that you'd get up at noon. It is 1.30. Get up. A little while. No, why don't you get up now? No. 
Did someone have a late night? What time did you guys stay up till? 5.30. Oh! No. Yes. No! Get up. No! Hi. Straight after my warm welcome from Blake, he went to find Cole to beat him up. <laughs> You need to stay here. Did you hear me? Donna's just lost control of the boys. I mean, Blake's just gone off. She doesn't know where he is, when he's going to be back. I mean, anything could happen to him. Blake! One hour after leaving, Blake came home and I had a really good chance to be able to talk to him. But do you get this feeling like your mum needs my help? Mm. Sometimes families need help, you know? They need extra help, and that's what your mum did. I ignore my mum a lot. It's, uh, like, going to my friend's house and stuff. So, like, when mum told you that I was coming, like, what did you think? Do you think I could help her? We didn't talk much, but the silence said everything, and I know that losing his father has had an enormous impact on him. I'm not going inside. Yeah, you are. Later on, Mum was trying to round the children up for dinner, but she just wasn't having an easy time doing it. Come on. Hey, yeah. Get Stop being so... Get off. Where are you going, Aiden? I'm getting oh. really pissed off. Get inside. You need to get inside. <laughs> Aiden, come on. Go. Come on. Get in here. Go! It was like putting balls into a bottomless sack because every time one kid went out and she brought the other kid in, the other one would go out and she'd bring it in, and the other one would go out and she'd bring it in. You need to get inside. Come on. There's one of me and four of them, oh, and so that's what I'm one of them runs, the other one goes exactly. over here. And I don't even know where Stephanie is at this point. I hadn't even been here a full day, and I could tell that Donna had just had it. How long have you been putting on this brave face, Donna? I don't know. Because right now, you're transparent. You asked me to come in here and observe and watch and help your family. Hmm? I'm sorry. No. It's just harder than I thought it was going to be. It's, like, really frustrating. And she was really at a loss. I mean, you, you really felt that this lady was trying to hold on and just losing that grip. What is so hard at the moment for you? What is hard? It's easier just to let them go, like I said before. You know, they can go do what they want. I'm definitely one of those people who's like, this is your situation, just buck up and take care of it. Sitting around and crying to me is not a solution. How long, this <laughs> lump in your throat, how long with the big brave face? I don't know. I don't know the answer. A long time, let's say that. Do you know how long I did it? Five years. Five years. I can relate to Donna. I know what it's like to lose somebody that you love so close to your heart. I was 24 when I lost my mum, and it's the hardest thing that I've ever had to deal with. So I know what Donna's feeling. i give you a big hug. <laughs> Donna, for about two years, has been braving a lot of feelings. But if she wants to move on, she's going to have to face some real concerns. If I was to have this conversation with you and ignore the tragedies that have happened in your life, then I would be ignoring a very important part of your life. And I'm talking about your husband and the compassion that I truly feel because I know what that feels like. As much as a tragedy it is that has got you here, the fact is, is that what you and Steve do have together is four beautiful children. And when you married that man and you made a commitment to him, you also made a commitment together to raise your children. And I know that if he was here, 
that is what you'd want. But and I'm not going to use your circumstances as an excuse because I know that you wouldn't want that either, correct? That is very correct. It brings me on to behaviour here. I think it's absolutely disgusting the way your children continue to be aggressive to you, hitting you, swearing at you, disrespecting you. Absolutely appalling, Donna. How dare they think that they can talk to you like that? But they think they can because you allow it. I could ask you, why? Why do you tolerate it? I guess I just haven't found a solution. I haven't found a way to make it stop. Would they have even thought to have spoken to you like that if their father was around? No. No, they wouldn't have. Why do you think they do it? To get attention, you know, to just kind of get me. Maybe they're angry at me. I don't know. Why do you think that your kids are angry with you? I don't know. I think they're angry at me because... <laughs> because I'm just one person and I haven't been doing everything that they need, I guess. I don't, I don't know, honestly. <laughs> Maybe just they're not getting, like, peace, kind of, like, peace in the house. <laughs> You're not getting it, are you? Not at this moment. You do need to be able to step up and to take your role in this house seriously as the mother because what will happen is it will spiral completely out of control right down to Stephanie. If this is gonna work, I've gotta take charge. And there's just no ifs, ands, and buts about it. Who needs to be the disciplinarian in this house? I do. I'm ready. I'm definitely ready. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Then let's get to work straight away then. Okay. With all the trauma that the kids have gone through, Cole having leukaemia and them all losing their father, Donna is finding it really hard to enforce discipline. Can I have a, a quick chat with you? Sure. sure. Yeah? I'll bring the kids in. When Joe walked up, I was like, OK, we're starting. Get on my shoulders, I'll carry you in. <coughs> Come on. We got to go in. <coughs> go. It was crucial that Donna be such a big part of the change in her home and not that the children would just see me coming in and making change. So I asked Mum to present the rules to her boys herself. OK, Mum, can you go through your rules? OK, number one, do as you're told by your mother. Number two, must have mother's permission before leaving the house. Number three, treat your mother with respect. What's it mean, Donna? It means yeah, to listen really? to me, to not back talk to me, not cuss at me. <laughs> I think Joe's rules are stupid. Number four, computer time to be earned. No fair. These boys were taking their mum for a ride. They knew it and she knew it. And now their gig was up. F that. F you. F you. I think Blake and Cole, at that moment when Joe was introducing the roles, they perceive it as, you know, a threat or somebody who's coming in kind of to mess up their world. They've been allowed to do pretty much whatever they want to. And Mom, I can get on the computer whenever I want. It's not up to her. Get the f on if I want. It's my house. What I'm seeing up here is damn right rude and it needs to change. Mum? Yes. Cole, as expected, wanted to push past what was being said and kept the door locked. Ownership. Cole? Cole? Cole, can you open the door, please? No! Cole, you need to open the door, please. No! I knew that Donna would have to go in militant with these boys. All these locks get taken away. No locks on no doors. So your children can decide when they want to lock the door and not listen to you. That's not happening in this house anymore. 
If these children are not prepared to listen to you, then you have to make a stand and take the locks off the doors. That way that they know they cannot control the situation by using a lock on a door. So, Mum, you're going to pop the lock with this. So I got the power drill out. I'm not having none of it. It's important that it's not me doing it, it's you, because you're following through and your words are your words and you mean what you say. So the locks came off and there was this kind of empowerment from Mum. I was mad. Go away! And there was Cole just laying back watching her. Word, Mum stepped up. Oh, Mum means business this time round. You show Mum that you can leave your door unlocked, then the locks can go back on the door again. I just want you to leave us alone. Get off me! I walked in on Blake and Cole having an argument upstairs with them using the computer. So who's up for listening about the computer and coming to uh, a solution? Cole? What? I'm going to go downstairs with Mum and talk about this and resolve it. If you guys want to join in with the conversation, feel free to come down, OK? The boys are constantly fighting over the computer and that needs to stop. Come on, we're going to go downstairs. So now's the time to introduce it as a house rule. What's going to happen, all right, is that we're going to bring the computer down, all right, from in the one room and pull it in a room where everybody can share. And these are your reward vouchers. This coupon entitles you to so many hours of your computer. This All right, coupon. so you've got a way of earning to be on the computer this time. That's me. That's So, books. That's tall. Books for you. OK, to get to Cole and to Blake so that they earn the computer time. <laughs> for me, it was so important for them to recognise. You use it all the time, you don't do anything else, and now you're going to start appreciating the fact that you do go on this computer and earn it. How'd you earn it, Donna? How'd you earn the computer time? With good behaviour. <laughs> let's go and get the computer and let's just bring it down, OK? OK. No! Computer. When Blake realised what we meant was we were taking the computer downstairs... Blake, come here, please. Shut up! He dug his heels in. I was talking I to care. you. I would like you to turn around and speak to your mother with respect. No! Blake got really mad. He wasn't interested, was really against it. What I won't do is stand by and watch you be disrespectful to your mother, cos she loves you. Donna, come over here, please. This is something that I want to get resolved. And? It's my room. It doesn't matter if you're, it's your room. I don't know if Donna just didn't get it or whether she just wasn't doing it, but this is her house and she needs to put her foot down. We can set up something that's fair. I'm not helping you. Where's he going? No idea. <laughs> I suggest you go and get him. Donna just couldn't let Blake run off this time. She really had to show him that she cared enough because previously she just let him go off. When Mum and I decided that the computer was going to go downstairs, Blake threw a fit and ran outside the room. And it was crucial that Mum get him back into the house. You need to come back, OK? Come on, let's go. Look, why don't you want to come back? Why don't you want to try, Blake? I'm not doing this to be mean. I'm doing it so we can be happier. I wasn't really sure if I was getting through to him, but he did walk back home. Patience is key with any parent, and no exceptions made for Blake either. But Mum's persistence is really paying off. And a few minutes later, Blake came upstairs to help out. So who's going to carry what? I'll carry the mother. Right, we're going to take the computer and then we're going to bring it downstairs. Can I take this stuff, you think? Yeah. Right. Excellent. <laughs> right there. It was really great to see Blake finally opening up. Mom, why do we have to move the computer? I think it's a great idea because that way I can keep track of what's going on with it. Thank you, honey. And very quickly, those guys were earning computer coupons. Well done, Blake. Well done. Good job, buddy. Thanks yeah. for cooperating. Yeah.
Better hope good. so not. But as I could predict, Cole broke the rules and he went outside the house without even asking permission. You need to come back inside. No. Yes, you do. I want to get on the computer. Go back inside. <laughs> Get off! <laughs> Cole certainly wasn't giving in. Get off! But Mum had to make it really clear that he wasn't going to get away with this behaviour either. Must have mother's permission before leaving the house. Did you ask your mother? No, you didn't. So this is what you are going to do. You're now going to sit on that seat one minute per your age. How old are you? How old is he? Eight. Exactly. Eight minutes. I got in trouble for now following the rules. Every time he decides to break these rules, then he's going to end up on that chair. I had my doubts at that moment if he would stay in the chair, but he did. So, you know, that, that was encouraging. But don't let Cole's aggressive behavior intimidate you, OK? Because at the end of the day, he's an eight-year-old boy. I think I had kind of thought, there's nothing I can do. They're just not going to listen to me. Cole, you were put here because you broke the rules and you didn't ask me before you left the house. And then I realized, you know, just every time I, I stepped forward a little bit with them, that it was working. So I was like, hey, you know, this works. I want an apology, Cole. <clears throat> Sorry. OK. You can get up. No. OK, it's up to you then. But we're going to go outside in the backyard and have some fun. Donna's really getting a grip now on Cole's difficult behaviour, but I thought it would be a good challenge to get them to work together as a team, something that they had never done before. This is what you have to do in eight minutes. There is a hose and there are buckets. And Mum is holding that cylinder over there with a red mark around it. I've created a water obstacle course so that Mum and Cole can work together in beating the clock. You ready? Eight minutes to do all of that. Yeah. On your marks. Mom, you're going to follow make up. Make it eight minutes. Ah, oh, I think you will. Get set. Go. Come on, Cole. I'm never going to make it. You've got water. Filling up the buckets. Okay. And there was Cole filling up the buckets and walking really fast and trying to pour the water into the cylinder, which was going all over Mum. Keep going, keep going, yeah, quick! <laughs> Run! Cole enjoys a challenge. So I had a lot of fun just watching how excited he was. Got it now, Cole. Yes! That's it! Oh, look! You got it. By listening and cooperating. All right! He's realising that, you know what, I'm getting a good response from Mum. You got two and a half minutes! I do feel it allowed them both to have a lot of fun together. One minute left, buddy! One minute! And considering Donna spends most of her time in confrontation with Cole, it was a great exercise to bring them together. We did it! So well done, Cole. Oh. Can we do it again? Yeah, was that cool, then? It was fun playing with her because we never play with each other. <laughs> when he'd actually turned around and said, oh, can we do it again? That was it. I mean, you had it then. Can I go to Brandon's? No. Why not? Because I need you here right now. Later on, Blake wanted to go to his friend's house, and Mum said no. But Blake's an older kid. You can't keep him inside all day. So I thought it was time to step it up and introduce some trust between them. How far's Brendan's? Yeah. Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes away, OK? What we would like you to do is be back by quarter past seven. Have you got a watch, Blake? Have you got a watch? No. No? So I decided to give him a watch and a definite time to come home so that he could be responsible and show Mum that he could stick with that and earn her trust. <laughs> He's running home now, isn't he? He's five minutes late, but, you know, at least he's coming back, and that's good for me. Hey, buddy. Hey. What time is it? 7.19. So you're a bit late, right? Mm-hmm. 
So, how long does it take you to get back from Brendan's? Like two minutes. Two minutes, okay. So, what time would you need to leave? Uh, some 13. Okay, you got it. All right, so let's make sure that we do that, okay? Okay. So that we can get back on the top. Go up and tell Mum that you're back, though. All right, okay. So he was running five minutes late by my watch. The fact is, he came back. Give or take those five minutes. Mm -hmm. When you develop that first side of trust there, him listening to you, you listening to him. I think he's actually getting into it. I'm so optimistic now, you know, even more so. Good. Yeah. That's where we want you. I feel happy with the progress that you've made. I want to leave you. I want to leave you to get on with the techniques. Okay. Keep your strength up. Okay, Donna, you've done really, really well. You've done really well. I hope you can see the small steps that you're making forward. She knows what she needs to be doing. And whether she puts it into practice is yet to be seen. So you feel good about that? Yeah, I do. I feel pretty good. I've only been here a couple of days, but Donna has made progress. But I've got to be honest, I am concerned about how she's going to deal with all four kids when I'm away. Be good, yeah? Be good. Bye-bye. Okay, yeah. Okay. I guess it's mixed emotions because, of course, you know, now it's like the true test. Well, I can't wait to show Donna this DVD footage because it's going to take her to another level. Watch this. So, Donna. Are you ready to take a look at this DVD? Honestly? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Ah, you want to see it or not? I guess. OK. Mom? Yeah? Can I get on the computer now? Did you earn any time? You want to run the vacuum? How long would I get if I ran the vacuum? 20 minutes. OK. Yep, for 20. Now, you can't say that's not pleasing to the eye. <laughs> I love the fact a conversation has opened up about how Cole can earn his computer time, because it means he's thinking. But good praise there, though. I like the fact that even when Cole was doing the stairs, you were still giving him praise and acknowledging it. OK, should we move on to the next one? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cole, I want you to get off the computer right now. I'm not on it! Excuse me. You are Excuse me! It. What are you doing? Looking up stuff. You don't have computer time. I want you to get off the computer or you will not be going over to Ryan's today. Oh my god, what the freak is wrong with you? You will not go to Ryan's swimming today. Okay, I'm gonna be on now. No, now you're gonna go sit in the chair. I want you off the computer. No. Get off the computer. They already made Ryan you? go home. You don't kick me. Cole. What? If she doesn't like it, let her go. I'm not doing anything! What happened? Look at Cole's mouth here. You should have put him in line, Donna. If you don't want to eat lunch, that's fine. These are crap. Go to Ryan's. You should have gotten off the computer. Go to Ryan's no matter what. Cool. Right now, you're all mouth and no trousers. You kept saying, get off the computer. I need you to get off the computer. You don't need him to do anything for you. You need him to make a decision. Otherwise, he's going to get a consequence. Because you've not followed through on anything, the only thing that Cole is going to see is that he was able to backtalk you, to continue the way he wanted throughout the whole morning, and he still ended up doing what he wanted to do. I think when he, when he does start acting up more, sometimes it, it throws me back a little. You're the mother. Your word's final. You don't need to argue about that. OK, should we move on to the next one? Blake's on the internet. 
How do you know he's on there? He just logged on. He's going to get his ass kicked. Blake, you need to get off the computer. Just because you went to Brendan's doesn't mean you can be on the computer. Mom! What? Still on. Cole said you're still on. All right, so you logged off? It says you logged out, but you're not logged out. I bet Blake just did it. Well, he told me he logged out. Well, he lied. <laughs> oh, brazen. <laughs> Look what's happening here when he's hanging around with this group. I like staying up late at Brandon's house. I pretty much can do whatever I want in Brandon's house. <laughs> yeah. Spray painting my French shoes green. Because just something to do. Yeah. Because his mom will get mad. We usually run around till like 2 in the morning. Like, yeah, 2.33. That's like pretty much when we go out. It's pretty fun because nobody's out and you can do pretty much anything you want to. Blake definitely looks up to me all the time. Tonight, well, we're all sleeping over here. We do some pretty crazy stuff. The parents don't really find out because we kind of sneak out really late when everybody's asleep. I don't see how we don't get caught that we're so loud. What did you make of that? It's not funny anymore, is it? No. It is a concern about what they're getting up to, because you just don't know. You, you don't, don't know, know what your boys are doing. You don't know if they're in and out. You don't know what's really going on. We're looking at teenagers here. They're 14, and we're looking at a preteen. When we look at Blake, he's mature in some ways and immature in others. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. and he's hanging around and he's looking up to the older boys. He wants to be one of the boys. He wants to be accepted. And you want to hope that the mischief they're doing is harmless or it's not going to affect somebody else and it's not going to get them into trouble. So it's about giving these kids a sense of freedom, but at the same time making sure that you're protecting them and looking after them so that they don't go off the rails, so they don't get in trouble with the police. Absolutely. Huh? We've had a crazy few days with so much change happening in the house, but I wanted to get this family together having fun because there's that side as well. So I decided to take them all bowling. Push it down so she can see. Whee! Yay! Yay! It was the first time that I'd seen the family all together doing something that they really enjoyed. Here in. So Aiden! It was nice to go to the bowling alley and have some fun. You know, kind of get a break from all the routine and the discipline. All right! Woo! Bowling was good. It's been nice playing with my family. <laughs> Donna said to me when I first met her, Joe, I just want peace. There's no peace in this house. Did you hear that? Mm-mm. Is that more peaceful? No, oh, you mean the quiet? Yeah, it is. Definitely nice. And in a nutshell, Donna found peace. You've come a long way. I think so. There's been so much going on in Donna's household. New rules and discipline and rewards. I didn't want Donna to ever think that I'd forgotten that this woman was also a woman that was healing and in bereavement. I bought a really nice tree. And as a tribute to her husband, I suggested for them all to come together as a family and plant a tree in celebration of his life. Because the idea of um, that tree being planted at the back and Stephanie growing up and seeing that tree... I thought would really be beautiful for all the kids in, in, like, in memory. Mm. In celebration. Mm. Gonna start me crying as well. <laughs> I think it was the real moment when I felt like, you know, Joe really cares and her intentions, you know, are truly, truly good. And 
she brought out a lot of feelings in me that I think I've just held in. Yeah, that's nice. I like that idea. Mm -hmm. I do. You're really beautiful. Yeah. That tree. Where do you want it? Come on. Can you help mommy? Push. <laughs> the tree that we planted today was in memory of my dad. Where do you want yours? The ribbons was a good idea to put on a tree because it resembles my whole family. We need another one. The change in Blake, just seeing him participate, it just shows that he understands and he appreciates what we all did kind of together. I'll think of my dad every time I see the tree. From my experience, it's a really long journey when you lose someone that you love. The family is still healing. It's a big step for them today. To me, it's such a beautiful way to symbolically celebrate Steve's life and to know that as that tree grows and expands, so are their family. The first day of teaching, you may have thought was the first day, but I feel today it's the first day of a new beginning for you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really proud of you. Take care of yourself, you OK? Bye-bye. And I think by the end, all of us realized that it was hard, but in the very end, it was worth it. There's no doubt Donna has made tremendous progress. And they are going to have days where it's going to be difficult. But at least Donna has felt empowered in being able to raise her boys and know that she's on the right pathway. And that's what matters, because at the end of the day, it's about being the best possible parent she can. What Joe gave our family is the ability to come together and make this a, a great family. Uh-oh, get it, Aiden. Go get him. I definitely have much more strength than when I started out. My kids deserve to have those boundaries and to have that discipline and to learn what's right and what's wrong. Oops. Yeah, look at the cars. I see a change in Cole in his willingness to cooperate. I see him working, running the vacuum, or watching Aiden to earn his computer time. Blake's changed by taking more responsibility when he leaves and then, you know, setting a time and actually coming back at that time. I'm getting along a little better with my mom. We have more time to talk and stuff. So yummy. I can say that I'm proud of myself and I'm proud of my kids. <laughs>